Well, good afternoon, everybody at this stage. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to be here with you all. Um, I would like to start with thanking His Excellency, Dr. Jamal Al-Kabi, uh, and thanking the teams within DOH, Saha, SKMC, and our colleagues in AHS for making any of our work possible. I think I'll take you with me uh, through a short journey, talking um, a little bit about where do we fit within the equation um, of the health sector in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. We were lucky to be working with our colleagues um, within DOH for so many years now. Um, we've been part of the Mental Health uh, Reform Committee. We've been part of the Mental Health Task Force, and we are continuing to work proudly with them. The Abu Dhabi Public Health Center is a very young center um, that was born just about two years ago. And we are lucky to be alive, thanks to Dr. Jamal here. Um, he drafted himself the law for the establishment of the center. So let me talk about the center a little bit. Um, the center has been advocated for, for the last seven to eight years, and we were lucky to see it come to life in 2019. The whole idea of having the Abu Dhabi Public Health Center was to be the operational arm that actually can influence the implementation of prevention, education, um, and improving awareness within the community of Abu Dhabi and support our colleagues and the main regulator to ensure that we have the right leadership, the right advocacy to drive all the forces and bring them together. And we are very proud to be working with all our colleagues till now. We have amazing opportunities to initiate several projects. Now, we were born in 2019 only, and I think it was a very timely birth because it was only six months before the onset of COVID. So when we started working within the center um, in projects that are related to mental health, our main focus was on providing support to the communities during COVID. And that was an amazing catalyst that helped us to see the future even better. It helped us to put together the basic matrix that looks into the basic needs of the community, but at the same time, looks into new innovative approaches. So what happened basically is a very interesting story of success that we owe the thanks in each part and each chapter of it to our colleagues within the sector and to other stakeholders within the government of Abu Dhabi. The center have um, multiple strategic focus areas. Um, one of them is definitely improving the quality of life, reducing the expenditure on chronic diseases, and mental health is definitely a priority identified as a major element of chronic diseases combating. So when we came to draw the story, we started with small steps as usual. We've built on our original model of health promotion. The original model of health promotion basically emphasized on the importance of multiple elements. One of them is related to education, but the others are actually related to community mobilization, um, enabling people to take the right decision and using all the available resources and bringing them together. Um, there are two main roles that the Abu Dhabi Public Health Center is actually working on. One of them is leading certain initiatives as a representative of the government and the Department of Health. But the other one is also advocating and supporting all the stakeholders in mobilizing all their efforts to encourage all their creative initiatives that can bring the best outcome within the community. As part of the big reform that the Department of Health is doing for mental health, awareness and education became as a very important pillar that has been identified as an area that needed a lot of revamp. And I think we are all aware of what's happening with mental health stigma at all ages, starting from schools and till adulthood and beyond that. So what we've tried to do is within COVID time, there has been certain priorities that has to be met first. So what we've done is we've collaborated with our colleagues in DOH, we've collaborated with our national colleagues on the training of the best patch of the um, responders, the first aid responders to the HOPE helpline. Um, a lot of effort has been put into that from colleagues that are here already among us, uh, Dr. Nahida, Dr. Fatma, there has been a lot of training that has been done for those colleagues, and it was the first national helpline that was identified. Following that, there has been another helpline that has been created for the Emirate of Abu Dhabi, responding for the needs of the public in general. 
and it targets all age groups to start with. That was a wake up call for all of us because what we have received was not only calls for help related to what happens within COVID. What we've received was calls for help related to real life situations. Parents that have problems managing their children, uh, children that are young adults and, and having some um, abnormal thoughts and abnormal beliefs or imposing harm on, the, on themselves or on their family. That was for us a bigger alert that what we started with is just a baby step. We need this to continue way beyond COVID and we need it to grow, to address the needs of people for a continuous helpline within the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. And this is what we are working currently with our colleagues in DOH and Saha on establishing for the benefit of the whole public. There has been other initiatives that have been started based on the needs. So we've needed support for our people within isolation and within quarantine periods. And the way to reach that was simply by getting the best to do it our colleagues in, in Family Development Foundation with all their social resourcefulness, we're actually the group that has been um, basically engaged with us. Um, some of the other initiatives that we were talking about um, are actually coming later, uh, but I'm going to re-catch up with what's here. Uh, basically, we've realized that we cannot work alone and you can never really deliver any proper services, whether it's curative or preventative or educational unless you build the right collaboration. So we've started with multiple key stakeholders and we ensured that we work in Abu Dhabi Public Health Center as the glue that bring the policymakers, the regulators, the workers on the field and bring them much closer to the public, allow the public to directly participate in mental health forums that took place in 2020 and 2021 and allow them to communicate with leaders and decision makers and policy changers within all those sections. We also have a program that I was just talking about uh, with you to support you. And this is the program that we've had with our colleagues in the Family Development Foundation. Their main target was our people within isolation and within quarantine. But we also gave them the difficult responsibility of talking to our most precious, the families of the heroes and the victims of COVID so they were communicating with the families of deceased that are related to COVID deaths and ensure that they get what they need on a social level and on mental and, and health support uh, in general. Virtual webinars is something else that we also um, have cultivated based on the wealth of expertise that we have within our partners and our colleagues. Um, and we are strong believers in open discussions with the public. So a webinar was a perfect setting for us. Um, COVID enabled us with a tool, which is virtual platforms where people are much more used to and accustomed to at this stage. Um, before everybody wants to see you face to face. Now I think the general trend, the general preference is going to be virtual communication. And for mental health specifically, it allowed people to communicate with us through those 15 webinars anonymously, without seeing their faces, passing through their questions, their worries, um, their needs. And we try to have it in multiple languages, hoping to expand all of those to even further. Um, we also addressed special groups like worker groups, uh, students, college students, um, mothers of young children and pregnant mothers, in addition to the general public. We also have um, campaigns. This is what we do to build on um, the great work that our colleagues are doing in all the other sectors. Um, so we basically get out to people with media campaigns, radio, TV, social posts, and many of those has been um, repeated and echoed by our supporting stakeholders, which helped us to reach more than 100,000 interactions with people. Um, we don't claim it came just through our efforts. It basically came through the active support and reinforcement of all our colleagues that actually kept repeating, reposting, and supported us to reach people. We have a special passion for enabling people to explore on their own. Um, and maybe we come from a group that loves reading. We thought it's going to be a, a good add-on initiative in collaboration with our colleagues and partners uh, and His Highness Sheikh, Khaled, uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalid Foundation. Um, 
This initiative came to life to ensure that we give access to electronic books to people within isolation and quarantine setting and ensure that those books are relevant to the period, gives them what they need from um, basic tools for mental wellness, mental health, but also um, healthy lifestyles in general. We also are proud to work with our partners in SIDRA to serve a very important and a very uh, dear to our hearts group, which is kids of determination and people of determination in general. So we've had campaigns that approach this group, but also mainly focusing on their caregivers. We always underestimate the impact um, that it takes on caregivers and their families to look after uh, people of determination. Amazing starts that needs a very special type of care. Um, a lot of reading materials. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. I would like to bring your attention to this because this is an area where we really need a lot of help. We felt so proud um, about a year ago when we've managed to get a UAE local young man who had an experience, a very positive experience with seeking help early, getting the right treatment early to come and talk openly in a video that have basically sparked a lot of reaction within the public. A lot of people were so curious and so interested. And after a year, um, we've had an official request from his side to take it out. And that was really heartbreaking because frankly, um, it tells us how much pressure he was under just for being that brave and coming out to people and telling them, I'm a new person, I improved, it's a disease, it has been treated, I feel much better now. I'm functional with the help of interventions, medication, or whatever is needed. We have a lot of stigma on the floor, no matter, no matter how much we want to tell ourselves that we've done. Um, honestly, there's huge drive that's pushing people away from um, the basic messages that we are sending around. So I'm skipping this also. We have a lot of talks, actually. Don't know how to go back. Can I go back here? Yeah. Um, I just want to highlight also uh, special thanks to my team, uh, Dr. Asara, Dr. Abudur from ADPSC. Um, believe it or not, it's, it's a three-person team, basically, that has been working on that, myself and the two of them from ADPSC. And that's why I'm telling you, nothing of this could have been achieved if it wasn't for the collaboration and the great input and support we've got from all our partners. Um, those are some of the initiatives that I've already mentioned before. I think it's worthwhile highlighting two of them, uh, the telemedicine and the remote care platform. Uh, it was an amazing initiative. We worked on it with our colleagues in the Department of Health. Uh, the initial purpose for the Department of Health was basically to deliver care to people wherever they are. Um, from our perspective in public health, we wanted to use it also as a platform to improve education, awareness regarding precautionary measures, but also to inject mental health and mental wellness into the messages that those targeted group of people are getting. It targeted people above the age of 50 and people with chronic diseases. And we are hoping that this model continues after COVID turns into an endemic, hopefully. And that's another area where we need huge support from colleagues, especially His Excellency, Dr. Jamal. I think it's a model that may be relatively expensive now, but we need to find a financially sustainable model that's acceptable to continue after MAP. Um, and I think the other one that we would like to mention there is focusing on um, groups that might be relatively disadvantaged, uh, especially the big population of the labor work. Um, we are trying to reach them, but we really need to find culturally appropriate, language appropriate, that encourages them to really seek help and approach us. And I'm skipping this also, I think I've talked about it. Limitations I've talked about in general, stigma and stigma and stigma again. Um, budgets and people has always been a dilemma, uh, but I think it also I was an eye opener. Um, we've realized with very small budget, but with the goodwill of amazing colleagues like you, we can make all of what have been mentioned before. So what are we doing next? Um, as part of the general DOH mental health reform plan that I'm sure my colleagues will talk about it later, um, we have two major projects coming through the uh, foundational health strategy and Tumuh Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi Aspire, um, and will continue from 2022 this year to 2025. We will have special focus on improving and advancing 
the basic things that I've already mentioned to you as initial initiatives, but we'd also want to focus on special groups. So children and youth, victims of substance abuse, um, people of determination, and especially kids of determination, uh, young adults, blue color community, um, victims of abuse, and our seniors, uh, senior citizens and senior residents. And we do want to start much earlier. We want to start with the grassroots. We really want to start building a big base within our schools for kids that talk openly about mental wellness and mental health issues and dealing with stresses. We want to open a window for mental well-being and mindfulness within schools. In collaboration with all of you, we need to spend a lot of time educating um, and helping people within a school setting, including uh, staff, uh, teachers, uh, but also parents, in addition to strengthening the kids themselves and empowering them with tools that allows them to improve their responses, their resilience, and, then, and their mental wellness. Two things that I think I forgot to mention, um, we've already integrated mental health screening as part of our uh, FHAS comprehensive screening that Dr. Jamal have mentioned earlier. We want to do the same for children. We want to do the same for uh, the comprehensive school screening uh, that our colleagues on Saha are helping us with. Uh, and we want to ensure that we have early detection, early screening for those kids and bring them to the uh, available resources. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it.